Hello, 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 hello. Hi, everyone. JLR Investigates, come on in. I want to bring attention to this case out of Lancaster, California. This is a wild story, and I feel really, really bad for the victim in this case. Uh, this is really as bad as it gets, and we always say on JLR Investigates, each case we say, uh, this is as bad as it gets. Well, this one is as bad as it gets. This is a guy right here uh, that has a shady track record, and we're going to talk about the case of Matthew Switoski, Matthew Switoski, and his girlfriend Veronica, because his girlfriend Veronica was found in the trunk of a car inside his home's garage, and the car was on fire, and she was found dead in a trunk, and it's very, very sad. But this is the guy right here. His name is Matthew. He's 37 years old, right? And he was just arrested. He was just arrested. And it looks like he is held on now on 10 million dollars bond. It's, it's, it's a sad case, and this is his girlfriend here. Her name is Veronica Aguilar, and she was 27 years old, and she was found in the trunk of a burnt car that was on fire that authorities went to inside his home garage. It's, it's wild. But what he's, what's even more bizarre about this case is, one, this Matthew guy has an extensive criminal history of Multiple women filing PFAs against him. Um, I'm not going to say the victims' names in those PFAs, but they're very accessible, and you can see for yourself. But two other women prior to this girl has filed PFAs against this guy. But what's even more crazy about this case is he's out on bond for RAPE charges. He was out on bond. And I'm like, what? What? How was this guy even out on the streets? Well, let's show you what's going on. Let me give you a little backstory about this because we're, I'm looking into this case and it, it shocked me that someone's body was found inside a trunk of someone's car inside a home and the homeowner kind of just like went off, right? He jetted, he hit, he absconded, he escaped. But it's wild, right? So it says 27-year-old UCLA graduate ID'd as body burned in trunk of Lancaster car. And it happened inside this home here in Lancaster, California. A 37-year-old man is behind bars Saturday after being arrested in connection with the death of a woman whose body was found burned in the trunk of a car in the Quartz Hill neighborhood of Lancaster on Wednesday. Matthew Switolski was arrested around 6.30 p.m. Thursday in Kern County and booked on suspicion of murder, according to the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. It says sheriff's officials said Swoltowski owns the home in the 41,400 block of 38th Street West where the body was found around 8.30 a.m. Wednesday when fire crews extinguished a fire in the garage. Authorities initially responded to reports of a home explosion. <sighs> wow, folks. The family identified the victim as 27-year-old Veronica Aguilar, a UCLA graduate and elementary school teacher. Her body was found in the trunk of the car that was parked in the garage, officials said. The cause of the death has not yet been released. Well, I mean, it's bad, folks. It's bad. And I'm going to show you some of the crime scene photos with this particular uh, tragedy here. Why did it happen? How did it happen? And who the heck is this Matthew guy? Uh, things will never be the same again. We miss her so much. She had the best spirit. She's always had a smile. My family is heartbroken, said her brother Juan Aguilar. My sister Veronica was so smart. She was an elementary school teacher, a UCLA graduate student, and an amazing person to all. According to the neighbors, Swaltowski was believed to be Aguilar's boyfriend. He's being held in $10 million bond. $10 million, folks. According to court records, jail records show he was previously arrested in May for an unspecified felony. Well, I got those charges, and I'm going to show it to you. R-A-P-E. R-A-P-E. So this is him. Uh, I'm the only one on YouTube thus far that has been posting his photo. Most of the media outlets have been reporting about his arrest. No one's posting this guy's photo. Uh, if you Google search this particular case... And, and, and I don't think that's fair to anyone, right? We want to see who these people are when they get arrested. We don't want to, uh, you know, not have their mugshots out there or photos of them because 
there could be other victims from this guy because it seems like this guy, this Matthew guy, has an extensive track record of victimizing females. But if you just Google his name, you're going to see, you know, Lancaster man uh, arrested in death of woman whose burnt body was found inside the home. Uh, but you won't see pictures of him. Now they're finally putting the victim's picture, which is good because the victim should always be honored. And they've raised a lot of money on a GoFundMe, which I'm going to show you. But they don't show pictures of him. Why? Why don't they do that? So we did this on JLR Investigate. I, I did a couple prior uh, videos on him to get his face out there, particularly when he was a person of interest and somebody could recognize him. But look at look at this. I got it partially of kind of what the crime scene looks like. They boarded it up now, but the fire people were there. Prior, I was able to snatch some of this footage up. So that's the home. That's where it happened there. Inside the garage of his home, the, the whole car exploded, and she was found in a trunk. So I'm faith, it's safe to say that he probably put her in the trunk and did something very, very bad to her inside the home. And look, that's the house there, it's the car, as you see, it's, it was a really bad situation out there in uh, Lancaster. And I'm, I bet you the neighbors were shocked to the core that this guy, I mean, who puts a girl in a trunk and then does this inside their own home? I mean, it's, it's so bizarre. But why? Why did this happen? Look, see? Look, I'll take you back right there a minute to show you. Look, there's, there it is. There it is. Now, there's two vehicles there. I think it was this one here. Uh, but two, he jetted. After this happened, he kicked rocks and he, he, he escaped. He ran off. Um, only in California, right? <laughs> All these bizarre things happening in California lately. Not shocking. Not shocking at all. Okay, so how did this happen? Why did this happen? And who is this Matthew guy? Well, there's some court cases on him right now. There's some court cases on him right now. And I was able to pick, pick this up. And they, remember the law article that I just shared said unspecified charges. Well, here are his charges. He's out on bond. He was out on bond for before he did this where he burnt his girlfriend. Uh, State of California versus Matthew Swiltoski. It's a case number. Filed arrest date was 4-27-2023. Filing date 5-1-2020-23. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So he's was, he was been out for seven months. And look, look at these charges, folks. Look at the charges. I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to say the charges here. And you can see for yourself, right? How was this guy able to be out on bond for these type of egregious charges, right? How was he supposed to be out on bond on these type of charges? Look at this. Do you see what I mean? And look. These are some of the process, right? So it's 5-1, 5-8, 5, 1, 5, 8, 5, 19, 5. And the last thing was a preliminary hearing on 6-30. Now, there's another 6-30 on case. I'm going to show you. Same thing. Yeah, it's awful. It's awful. And this was the filing date for the 6-30 versus Matthew uh, Swiltowski. Look at the charges. Look at the charges there. I mean, it doesn't get it. Look at this. Look, look, look at this. Injury of a spouse, fiance's boyfriend, girlfriend, or child's parent. And this guy was out on bond. And what's crazy is he had a preliminary hearing coming up next month. He just went to court. I guess, I guess there was a continued preliminary hearing at the end of November. At the end of November 2023. And he had a court date coming up for next month for all these charges all these charges, right? I mean, this is some really egregious charges. And so it makes me wonder who's the victim here? Who is the victim? And look what look what look what he was out on. $600,000 bond that he posted 6-6-2023, which I find is like crazy. Yeah, that's a high bond and it's rightfully so. But he was able to post a $600,000 bond in June. And then while out on bond, now he's arrested for killing his girlfriend. Now, 
is that the girlfriend? Is that the girlfriend he, you know, was charged with and he wanted to retaliate on her? Or is this a whole separate girl? And that makes me wonder. And I'm trying to find out details as it goes. So I, I'm definitely paying attention to this case. Um, anyone that's familiar with the case, I would love to hear from you. Email me at JLR at JLR Investigates um, because I wanted some details. Is this the person who was going to testify that the victim from the, the, the charges in May and then he got out and maybe found her and kidnapped her and put her in a trunk? That's what it seems like. But I'm not so sure. Less, less – you know, he gets out for doing something to somebody else and then gets into a new relationship with a girlfriend or has a you know, relationship with Veronica here. Now, Veronica's family two days ago set up a GoFundMe in loving memories of Veronica. And they raised a lot. So a lot of people care. They raised $16,926 out of the $20,000. Um, you know, I don't normally post, um, you know, GoFundMes on JLR Investigates, but... It seems like the family here, you know, wants some help with her. And it, it, no one under any circumstances should be found in the condition she did inside a trunk. It says, uh, I am asking for help on behalf of my family. And this is for, from her brother, I guess. Um, I, am, I am asking for help on behalf of my family and myself to help the, my family in this darkness of time. My little sister, Veronica, was taken from us on December 20, 2023. Her story is all over the news of her brutal death. Things will never be the same ever again. We miss her so much. She had the best spirit. She always had a smile. My family's heartbroken. My sister, Veronica, was smart. She was an elementary school teacher, a UCLA graduate, and an amazing person. With your help, we can give my sister, Veronica, the proper funeral she deserves. Thank you. Um, Very, very sad, right? I'm assuming that she didn't have kids, and I'm assuming that he did. Now, he was in a relationship before. Um, there was only one per one, literally one online picture circulating of him and I was able to snag it. And again, this is him. Remember this face. If you know anything about this guy's face and why he did this, the guy was out on $600,000 bond for other egregious acts. And then while on, on bond, he took, he took the life of this innocent soul. It's very, very bad. It's very, very sad. And I am, uh, covering this case. And I'm going to try to get some more information. I'm going to try to get some affidavits and find out specifically about his prior charges and specifically about who this dude is. Who is he? Where did he come from? What's his track history and record? And why wasn't he watched more? And, you know, <laughs> wow, right? And the guy doesn't, I mean, the guy looks normal to me, right? But, you know, looks can be deceiving and, you know, can't necessarily judge a book, um, by its cover but sometimes those charmers that are the most dangerous right the ones that look normal are the most dangerous it's it's, it's crazy and it goes both ways i am jlr investigates just wanted to pop up real quick and show you this particular case um feel bad for the neighbors the neighborhood and everything like that it's it's wild man is this like some i mean he takes I, I, was she already at his house and he put her in the trunk or did she get kidnapped from another you know location and brought to the house Neighbors are claiming they heard a scream. The fire was 8.30 a.m. on Wednesday morning. So the guy literally, but it, nothing sh shocks us, right? Remember we just talked about the Wawa Wacko that burnt his house down with, with him in it the other day? I mean, I don't get it. I don't get it. Don't get it. All right, we'll talk soon. I cover true crime, 24 hours, 365. I am JLR Investigates. Thanks for watching, and when more information comes out, uh, and JLR, don't go yet. Yeah, I got to go. Uh, covering cases, covering the Charlie Sheen uh, person that did this to, to Charlie Sheen. I'm really digging in deep on her. And, you know, we're covering cases, whatever's uh, unfolding. There was some mass shooting or something that happened in Baltimore this morning at a library. So I'm looking into that. So uh, more information comes out with these cases. You know where to find me. Hit that subscribe button and let me see those comments come through. Let me know what you think. And email me at JLR, JLR Investigates. Have a great day, everyone. We'll talk soon.